Hola mi gente, welcome back to the channel. On today's video, we are going to dive into monthly paying dividend ETFs. In total, we are going to touch on seven ETFs that pay a monthly dividend that I think are great for this investment strategy. Now this channel is by no means a channel that just focuses on dividend paying stocks. This is a channel that primarily focuses on swing trades and long term investments in individual stocks. We don't usually recommend ETFs and we don't focus only on dividends. What we really like to do on this channel is find stocks that we like, find trading opportunities, use options and sell options such as covered calls, poor man's covered calls or cash occurred puts to create our own dividend. So this video might not seem like the normal video that we do on this channel and that's for a very good reason. Right now, dividend stocks, in my personal opinion, are going to catch a bid. I think a lot of people are going to start flocking into these kinds of investments as we head into a recession. So if you can find a stock that has consistently been paying a dividend, is a company with a fortress of a balance sheet, and is going to stay around and is going to last through a recession, those are the kinds of places people are going to put their money. Those are the kinds of investments that smart money, institutional buyers are going to be buying up because right now it's a risk off environment, but people still need yield, people still need to make money. So dividend stocks are a great alternative or a great position to put yourself in during a recession. But nevertheless, I think it's a double whammy here. I think you can get that dividend yield and you can also get an appreciation in the share price of the ETF or the individual stock that pays a dividend if you choose to go that route. Now, before we dive into the list of seven monthly paying ETFs, there's something that we need to talk about before we start talking about the individual ETFs. And that is where the Federal Reserve is going to go in the federal fund rate. If you don't know what the federal fund rate is, it's essentially an overnight rate that banks use to park cash. The federal fund rate right now is extremely low. And the Federal Reserve, the central bank, is right now in a policy that they're going to be increasing rates. They are in a rate height cycle. And as you can see by this Federal Reserve.gov monetary policy FOMC projection table, basically the dot plot, we can see that the federal fund rate for 2023 has a range of 2.4 to 3.1. And in my personal opinion, I think the Federal Reserve is going to have to be more hawkish. They are probably going to have to be on the upper end, if not exceed this mark right here of 3.1% in 2023 for the federal fund rate. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this up on this video, we're talking about dividend stocks. Who cares about the federal fund rate? Well, it matters because investors who chase yield can find themselves having an opportunity to put money in a short term treasury and still collect 3%. If the federal fund rate is 3.1%, then you can expect the rest of the yield curve to be higher. So the rate you get on the two year treasury should be higher than 3.1%. The rate you get on a 10 year treasury should be higher than the two year treasury, which should be higher than the federal fund rate. The rate you get on a 20 year treasury or a mortgage backed security should be higher than the 10 year, should be higher than the two year, and should be higher than the federal fund rate. You get the picture that I'm painting here. As the federal fund rate gets to 3%, the rest of the yield curve should be higher if things are normal. And how does this impact dividend stocks? Well, if you are collecting a dividend of 3% just for the dividend, and that's the reason why you're in that stock, or let's say 4%, a potential safer investment would be buying a treasury where you can collect 3.5%, 4%, depending on how high yields go, depending on how high rates go in the treasury market. So it is my personal opinion that we are going to see rates increase on the 10-year treasury, on the 20-year treasury, on the two-year treasury. And that's why I personally am long the TBT. But the reason why I wanted to mention this on this video is that there might be that opportunity where you can diversify into some other assets and essentially collect a non-risk return. Now, if you're new to this channel, my name is Sean. This is We Are Investing. It's a channel that's dedicated in investing and personal finance. And before we dive into that list of monthly paying dividend ETFs, please consider hitting that subscribe button, ringing that bell, and smashing that like button. And just know that this channel does have a Patreon, which will give you access to a Discord server of over 500 investors, where I notify all members of every single stock and option that I'm buying and selling. And I talk with the Discord community about upcoming trade ideas. 
Now, there are four topics that we're going to dive in for every ETF that we discuss on today's video, and in total, there are going to be seven of them. We are going to take a look at what the dividend yield is. We're going to take a look at what the expenses are. We're going to take a look at what this ETF, the dividend ETF, holds. What stocks or assets are you buying with that ETF? And then we'll take a look at the charts to see the price action. Is it appreciating or depreciating over time? Is it increasing or decreasing in the charts? And what kind of return can you expect over a longer period of time? Now the first ETF, and these are all paying monthly dividends, is the Invesco KBW Premium Yield Equity REIT ETF. This goes under ticker symbol KBWY. And as you can see by the description from Invesco, this ETF or fund will generally invest at least 90% of its total assets in its securities of small and mid cap equity REITs. REITs stand for Real Estate Investment Trust. So with this ETF, you are getting exposure to real estate. And if we head on over to stockcard.io, you can see that this fund has a tenure of 11.37 years. So it's been around for quite some time. It is in the real estate category, it has an expense ratio of 0.35% and has a dividend payout of 11 cents. The assets under management right now is $317 million and it has a total of 32 holdings. The dividend right now, the dividend yield is 5.09%. It has a nice dividend yield. And if you take a look at the top 25 holdings, you will see that it's a lot of real estate investment trusts. It's all real estate investment trusts and the types of trusts that they invest in are going to differentiate from one another, meaning that some of them might be in healthcare real estate and others might be in office properties or commercial. It's not going to be one type of real estate, but it's going to be small cap and mid cap real estate investment trusts. But with that being said, this still does have volatility, as you can see by the one year, one day chart. In just a couple of months, it went from $26 all the way down to $24. So there might be times of volatility with this monthly paying dividend ETF. But over the long run, the trend remains the same. It looks like it's starting to rebound and it is in an uptrend over the last couple of years. The fact that this ETF focused solely on real estate that is something that I like about it because it provides diversification in a portfolio that might just be focused in stocks. Well, now you get a little bit of that real estate exposure and you're also collecting that dividend. The next monthly paying dividend ETF that we're going to be talking about is RYLD, which is the Russell 2000 covered call ETF from Global X. This is an ETF that follows a covered call or buy right strategy in which the fund buys exposure to the stocks in the Russell 2000 index and writes or sells corresponding call options on the same index. Now this ETF is going to be considered a growth and income ETF. It has 2.99 years of tenure. It has $1.62 billion assets under management and the number of holdings is just three. The expense ratio is 0.6 is a little bit higher because of that covered call strategy and the dividend payout is 24 cents. The dividend yield is going to be extremely high because of that covered call strategy, but because of that covered call strategy, you're going to limit the upside potential with this position in price appreciation. But 11.57% is really good considering the average returns in the S&P 500 range from 8% to 12%. So you're putting yourself at the higher range and you will still get some price appreciation. It said three holdings, but it's really two. They might have had one cover call that they rolled at the time of that, and that's why it said three instead of two. But essentially what you're getting is the Russell 2000 ETF, the Vanguard Russell 2000 ETF, and then you're going to be selling options. You're going to be selling covered calls or the fund is going to be selling covered calls against that position. And that's how they're going to create yield. This is something that we're very knowledgeable about. We know all about creating our own yield, and that is why we don't have to buy dividend ETFs but if you do not have that experience then this is a great alternative now ideally realistically this stock is going to follow the Russell 2000 but the growth is not going to be as high because you are selling covered calls the growth on the share price of the ETF but you are collecting a nice dividend as you can see by this chart it has had a nice rebound since the pandemic but it is downward on the year just like the russell 2000 is as well 
the next ETF on the list, this is number three, is QYLD, which is a NASDAQ 100 covered call ETF by Global X. Now, very similar to the other ETF, this is a buy right strategy, a covered call strategy. But instead of the Russell 2000 index, it is buying the NASDAQ 100 covered calls or stocks that are in the NASDAQ 100. This is a growth income ETF. It has 8.34 years of tenure, longer than RYLD. It has $7.08 billion assets under management. It is a monthly dividend ETF and it has the same ex expense ratio of 0.6% and has a dividend payout of 21 cents per share. A very similar dividend payout, a dividend yield of 11.04% for this stock, this ETF. And if you look at the companies that it's under its holdings, you can see it's Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Tesla, Alphabet, or Google, however you want to call it, NVIDIA, Facebook, Costco, Pepsi. It's the NASDAQ 100. What they're doing is buying these stocks and then selling covered calls against it. Now, the NASDAQ 100 has taken a beat-in as of late, and this ETF is down because of that. It is following the NASDAQ 100, but you are getting somewhat of a hedge because of that covered call strategy, and that's how come this ETF is able to generate 11% yields every single year. If the NASDAQ was to rebound, which I think is likely to happen, then you are also going to see some price appreciation in this stock as well. This ETF is going to focus heavily on tech stocks. So if you're bullish on tech long-term and you wanna get that dividend yield, then this ETF is a great option. The next fund on the list is AMZA, which is the Virtuous Investment Partners InfraCap MLP ETF. This fund seeks to provide exposure to midstream master limited partner MLPs with an emphasis on high current income. This is also considered growth and income, but it's focused on energy because MLPs are solely in energy. It has 7.5 years of tenure. It has $310 million assets under management. It is a monthly paying dividend. It has a dividend payout of $0.22 cents per share and it has a high expense ratio of 1.4%. The dividend yield is 8.42%. But where I think this ETF is going to shine, it has that high expense ratio and not the best dividend yield, but still a really good dividend yield of over 8%. Where I think this ETF is going to shine is the sector it is in. I forgot to show you the holdings, but the sector it's in is in energy. And the holdings, as you can see, are going to be energy companies like Energy Transfer, Plains All-American Pipeline, New Star Energy. DCP Midstream, Philips 66, Chenier Energy. And as you can see by the charts, energy has been popping off because energy is in a high demand and we have a supply issue with energy while demand stays high. And I do believe that this sector can outperform the S&P 500 for years to come. And it's because of that reason that I wanted to include this dividend ETF on the list. The next dividend ETF on the list is the Invesco S&P 500 High Dividend Low Volatility ETF, which trades under ticker symbol SPHD. What this ETF provides is 50 securities traded on the S&P 500 index that have historically have provided high dividend yields and low volatility. The fund tenure is 9.49 years. It is, has a dividend payout of $0.14 cents per share, an expense ratio of 0.3%, and $3.53 billion asset under management. The dividend yield is 3.22%. The top 25 holdings include S&P 500 companies that have low volatility but a nice dividend yield, like Williams Companies, Kinder Morgan, Altria Group, Chevron Corp, PPL Group, all of these companies are going to be in the S&P 500, and these are companies with low beta, meaning low volatility. So in times of uncertainty, when the market might collapse, these companies, these stocks, because they have low volatility, they should drop less. And if you take a look at the chart, I really like the chart on here, and I think it paints a really good picture of where money is moving into. As you can see by this chart, we are in an uptrend. We broke past the pre-pandemic highs. And I do believe that this can continue on higher. Because of that low volatility and dividend yield, I think a lot of smart money is trying to find a risk-off place to put their money while still collect alpha, while still make money. And that is why these ETFs, the holdings in these ETFs, are getting 
higher and higher and catching a bid. So even though the dividend yield is lower on this, I do like the situation that it's in. I do like the opportunity that it presents itself. And I do believe that you can still see some more price appreciation, probably more than the other ETFs that I mentioned. And that price appreciation is going to make up for that lower dividend yield. The next ETF on the list is the Vanguard High Dividend Yield ETF, ticker symbol VYM. This is a very diversified fund. It has 413 holdings, 15 years of tenure. It is paid quarterly. This one is not monthly. My bad for that. And has $45 billion asset under management. The expense ratio is extremely low. Vanguard has very low expenses. It is 0.06 and has a dividend payout of 66 cents per share. The dividend yield is 2.76% and the top 25 holdings include companies like Johnson & Johnson, J.P. Morgan, Procter & Gamble, Home Depot, Exxon, Bank of America, Chevron. Now, very similar to the SPHD, I do believe that this ETF holds companies that is going to attract investors during the time of uncertainty and the risk-off environment that we're currently in. And that's why I believe that there will be some price appreciation to VYM. And if we take a look at the charts, it is displayed in the charts as well. As you can see, we have a nice uptrend and we are above the pre-pandemic levels. The last ETF on the list, number seven, is the Schwab U.S. Dividend Equity ETF. It trades under ticker symbol SCHD. If we take a look, this is also pretty diversified. It has 104 holdings. It has it has a fund tenure of 10.49 years. It has a quarterly dividend payout. It has $34.76 billion assets under management, a dividend payout of 52 cents per share, and a, and a low expense ratio of 0.06%. The dividend yield is 2.88%, and the top 25 holdings are all going to be U.S. equities in the Dow which include Merck, Pfizer, Pepsi, Amgen, Coca-Cola, Verizon, Texas Instruments, and Broadcom, and more. With this ETF investing in dividend companies, U.S. equities in the Dow, you will also see that nice trend upwards, and I do believe that this can continue higher, just like the last two dividend ETFs that I mentioned on this video. So there you have it. I showed you a bunch of monthly paying dividends and a couple quarterly paying dividend ETFs that I think are worth consideration. Every investor is different. I'm not saying just to go out and buy all of these. I'm not saying to buy any of them. You need to take a look at your portfolio. You need to do your own due diligence and determine if and if it's worthwhile to get into an ETF that I mentioned in this video or a similar ETF because there are a ton of them out there. But with that being said, that pretty much wraps it up. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think about this list. Do you have any dividend ETFs that you are currently invested in or trading? And let me know if you have any creative ways of creating yield or return in today's market and climate. I'd love to hear your opinions and whatever questions you might have down below in the video description. Also, do not forget about that Patreon. You can join. The link is down below. Outside of that, I'll catch you on the next video. It's been real. It's been fun. It's been real fun. And this is We Are Investing, and together we are invincible. See ya.